Why is the wheel on a spinning wheel so big? That is a great question. Thank you for asking. I would love to tell you. In order to understand why we need the wheel of the spinning wheel to be so large compared to the bobbin, big size difference, you first need to understand how yarn is made. I have here a drop spindle so you can get a nice close up. Yarn is made by basically pulling out a piece of wool, nice and thin, and then putting a spin on it. And you can see I'm making some yarn right now. It's pretty slow going because of how quickly my spindle is turning. So even when we move to a larger wheel application, how can we make yarn more quickly? The answer is to make the yarn spin faster. So if we want to make the yarn spin faster, how do we do that? When you look at the way that a spinning wheel is built, you have here the spindle and on it sits the bobbin and the whorl. The whorl is actually part of this, um, this metal stick this, that goes in the middle of the spindle. So when the whorl spins, so does the spindle. But you also need the bobbin to spin separately because the bobbin is not attached. Both of these are spun by this string here, which goes over to the wheel. The wheel is then spun by this footman, which moves up and down like so, causing the whole thing to spin. And you notice how it's spinning very, very quickly. Why is that? So let's take a look with this bobbin here, which is obviously detached from the spinning wheel. Right down here, this groove is where my string would sit. And look how small that is, okay? It's about, it's about an inch, first segment of my thumb in diameter. So in order to spin this, I have a lot of options. Here is a very small, it's a pumpkin, but let's pretend, a very small spinning wheel. Imagine that they are connected by a string that goes all the way around them. When I, when I spin my pumpkin, because of the ratio here, it's about one to one to two, for every one turn of my pumpkin, my bobbin will spin twice around. If I make the pumpkin much larger, now you can see that huge difference. We're looking at maybe, maybe three times, even maybe four times the diameter from pumpkin to bobbin. For every one spin of the pumpkin, this will spin four times around. So comparatively, if I have my little pumpkin versus my big pumpkin, and this wheel is spun at the same rate because it's controlled by my foot, right? It's controlled by the foot pedal, which moves the footman, which moves this piece here, which causes the wheels to spin. So this is going to spin at the same rate, no matter what size it is. If my wheel is spinning at the same rate, regardless, the larger the wheel is, the faster my bobbin is going to spin, even though I'm putting in the same amount of effort from my body to spin the wheel. When you look at my actual spinning wheel, you can see the diameter here is again just about an inch on my bobbin, whereas the wheel itself is probably about two feet. So every time this wheel spins, my little bobbin spins about 24 times. And when I spin my wheel with my foot, one, two, three, four, five, look how quickly it makes my bobbin spin even though my foot is actually moving quite slow. So by using a very large wheel, you can put in a small amount of energy from the human body and create a very fast moving bobbin in order to make yarn more quickly. Just as a little bonus fun fact, that's also the reason why when you look at machine models, right, so this is a model of a Stirling engine, which is not um, a very practical thing to blow up to full scale, but it is fun to put it on top of your coffee cup because the difference in heat changes the air pressure in this little tube here, which causes it to go up and down, which causes this piston to move, which makes the wheel turn. And you can see here, very small piston goes around, causes the big, big wheel to turn. Why would you want the big wheel? The exact same reason that you would want a big wheel on your spinning wheel. Because if I can move this very quickly, then I can move something else very, very fast.